Okay, computer science 20, 13, multi 1, draw a clearly labeled block diagram of a 4 to 1 line multiplexer. That is, well, block diagrams are simple. So you just put the block, name it multiplexer. And a multiplexer will have a certain amount of inputs and one output, but they will have two selection switches for a 4 to 1. The selection switches will just basically be the, the bit patterns that will choose whichever input goes through to the output. So that's four marks there easily. Four lines, I0, I1, would well, not they give you the actual input. <laughs> they actually help you with the diagram here, yes. Okay, four lines, I0 to I3 are connected to the input lines of a 4 to 1 line multiplexer. Explain how the multiplexer can send the signal in I1 as output for the second followed by a signal in 3. Okay, so basically the selection switches will be mapped to a, um, a input. So the selection switches for to get input 1, you have to put 1, 0, no, 0, 1, sorry. Yeah, I'll have to put that for the second one, and then for input three, it'll have to be set to one one. Give two properties of flip-flop and state one use of this device. A uh, flip-flop, it holds a single bit of information. One or zero. And one use would be for a... Oh, sorry, a second property. Would be that it's a bi-stable device. Yeah, by stable device, meaning it could only have two stable states. It can be used in a register in a CPU. Or in a memory, or in or, or to store memory. Part B: Find the four-bit sign and magnitude representation of negative five. Right, I need some space to write this in. Sign and magnitude is basically looking at the first bit to make sure that it um it has the correct sign. So the first bit is supposed to be a negative sign. First bit should be a one to make it negative. So the first bit is a one that will make it negative, and then you have one zero one that is um, the value of five when you convert it to. Decimal. Four plus one will give you five. Alright, four bit one's complement of negative five. One's complement is basically just invert the bits. So wherever you had a one, you power zero, and wherever you had a zero, you power one, so you invert it. And then the two's complement now will be adding one. So we add one to it. In order to add one, you have to binary addition, so you'll end up getting one zero one one because the one will carry. Actually, sorry, no one will carry in this one. It'll just add.
Part C ascertain system represents decimal numbers by storing sign S mantis M and exponent E. One bit is used for the sign, three bits for the exponent, and four bits for the mantis or What decimal number is represented below? Alright, so I have the sign as one, so that means it's a negative number. I have the exponent as 0, 1, 0, which is 2. And the mantis is 0, 1, 0, 1. So we just move in the decimal point, placing the decimal point in front of the mantis up, and move in two spaces to the right because the exponent is 2. You'll end up getting 1.01, .01, and then we have to compute each one of those to its decimal equivalent. So the, we'll do the decimal part first. Basically, it's a quarter, so that's 0.25. And the one it will be one. Probably two to the power of zero. So you multiply the one and you get one point two five, right? Draw the truth table for the following logic gates. Alright, first one is a nut. Um so we have a zero and a one are the possible inputs. So the output will be the opposite. Then the next one is uh, and. That means both of them must be 1 for it to count. So we'll do our inputs as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, as always. And what you want to do is put the output as 0, 0, 0, 1, because that's a standard and gate. Meaning only the 1 and the 1 should give you output of 1. A uh, or gate. Um, draw the same table. X, Y. Your inputs will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And that should give you a uh, output of 1 if you have a 1 in either spot. So the 0, the 0, that will get 1, 1, 1 after because there is a 1 inside there somewhere. As an input. Once you have one in input anywhere, as a one, that will count. I'll give it all. Um Yeah, so I made a mistake here. It's not supposed to be one zero, it's supposed to be zero one. Input one is supposed to be zero one F one zero. But if you use one zero, that will be actually input two. All right, number two. A student wishes to keep a computer system for ten years. Just to just said that port connectivity will be a problem in a few years. Explain with one example to import connectivity. All right, one example for port connectivity would be as technology progress or advance is the type of ports would change or the types of port that come with a computer um, changes and the uh, older older devices become outdated or incompatible and they can't connect example USB and PS2 or USB A, USB C, VGA, HDMI, micro USB to USB C, whichever one you want to use, they're all available as examples. Because they said explain with one example, give the example. Even if they didn't say one example, give an example will always help you. Alright, part B, we differentiate between the following items as they pertain to computer systems, ROM and EEPROM. ROM is read-only memory and EEPROM is erasable programmable read-only memory. ROM cannot be erased, so ROM is permanent, that's, that's the answer that we'll be looking for. EEPROM can be erased because they just ask you to differentiate it. Like EEPROM could be erased by magnetic um, magnetic fields or something like that. Alright, EEPROM is erased by uh, no light by ultraviolet light. Yeah, by light, ultraviolet light. 
and double EEPROM is erased by electricity. By electrical signals, yeah. Alright, arrange the following in order of size from smallest to largest. Let's start with a supercomputer, PDA, laptop, microcomputer. Alright, now in this case, because the syllabus is from 2008, a microcomputer is considered a desktop, right? So PDA will be the smallest, laptop will be the next, microcomputer will be the supercomputer fourth. Um, explain what is meant by the instruction set of a computer. An instruction set is the the instruction set is the set of instructions or the range of instructions a CPU can carry out or understand and execute. Example, um, add, move, jump. Because they said explain, examples usually help when they, when they ask you to explain. State three types of instructions that are typically present in an instruction set and give one example of each type. Alright, so you have data manipulation, control, branching, and um, arithmetic operations. Okay, those are the three main ones to explain each one of them. They ask you for example, so data manipulation will be like set. So set a value. Control or branch will be like jump. And arithmetic operations will be like add and subtract. Briefly explain the term direct addressing. Okay, let me explain this a little more. Set register, jump to memory location, or subtract from a register. That will give you a, a solid example. Because sometimes if your example is weak, you will get a mark. So always go extra in the example because it proves that you understand. It proves that you could apply it, which is at the end of the day, that's what IT is for. Alright, direct addressing will be an instruction that directly manipulates a register or the memory address. So it directly manipulates the data in the register, meaning that there is no pointing to another spot. Now I'll explain how the fetch decode execute cycle works in our computer. Six marks, so two marks for each. So the fetch, the code executes. So you want to say get the instruction from memory and bring it into the CPU or into a register, right? So under normal circumstances, this will be one mark, but you have to say clearly that you're bringing it into the CPU and storing it in a register, right? The code will be determine what the instruction is by checking the opcode. So determine what the instruction says and what register or memory location to use to perform to perform it on. Yeah, usually you would mention upcode there. Execute, do the mathematical calculation and store the store the result in a register in memory. Alright, so mathematical will be the word there and then you have to store it back in register. The code, figure out what it is and what memory location it is, which is basically upcode and upper hand.